Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Eddie Marcus again. Good old Saturday night. Normally, I'd like to try to go out and do a little karaoke, you know, sing a little song, see if I can choose the right song and make people feel good. Well, cold outside, snowing outside, got no business outside. But I'm sitting here thinking, as I am always thinking, you know, spent a lot of time doing that. And I'm focusing on we the people as I do again most of the time. And I was thinking, if I were going to be president of the United States, what would my strategy be? What would my technique be? And I said it would be no different than it has always been. It would be the same thing, but perhaps a little bit more solid, a little bit more clear, if that's possible. You see, what I would do is that I would speak to the American people by video, camera, YouTube, whatever. Just like that, I might do a couple of flyers. And if anybody asked me to have a word here and there, I would do that. But my main concern would to say to you, the American people, I wanna be president of the United States because I want to see your dreams come true. That's what I want. And I don't think anybody else trying to get in this office gives a heck about that. And so I don't trust anybody, but I wanna do that. Now I know real and realize that people are always saying what they wanna do, like the build back better. And when I say that I want to make sure that your dreams come true, I'm basically centering on those things that are common amongst us as human beings for our existence. We call that survival. And we know what those survival issues are. And it is my concern that every last one of them are at your disposal. And because I know that if this is met, if there's nothing holding back your imagination and allowing it to blossom and you have an access to be who you are, then there would be peace, there would be prosperity, there would be freedom, there would be joy in our lives and your dreams would come true. I know this. And so this is what I would say to you, the American people. But that's just what I want. Is that what you want? It would have to be because without you, it will never happen. You see, in order for that to happen, it would have to come from the support of you, the people. It must be a mandate by you, the people. There is nobody in Congress, House of Representatives or the Senate that would support that because they don't support you. They support corporations and whomever they're getting that big money from, they're playing the game. It's all a game to everybody except you. And it's that way because you don't know the truth. And so I would say to you, every last one of you would benefit and every last one of you must participate. And that's what I'd leave it. I'd leave it right there. I would not ask you for a penny to raise nothing, to advertise, not one thing. I would just tell you that right there. And if you want it, you take it and run with it. You take it and spread it all over this country if you want it. If you don't want it, leave it alone. Don't touch it. I'm not selling anything. I'm telling you what you can have. I'm telling you what it takes to get it. And it's being offered to you. All you got to do is reach and grab it. Or do what you did in 2016. Now, that's what I would do. People would say, well, how do you expect to get any votes? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. You get what you deserve. I want us to realize that. The pain and suffering that we go through as individuals, sometimes we bring it on ourselves, but that which we experience collectively, we always bring it on ourselves. But we do it because we don't know any better. And we don't know any better because no one is teaching us the things that we come and learn with ourselves. We, we scared. You, we learn things. We learn better things, better ways. But we are afraid to say something because it's not the norm. And people are going to look at you crazy because you are not free. You are not you. <laughs> Everybody's trying to hide behind somebody so they can say we are together. So if one is wrong, then, then everybody's just like the Republican Party is today. So I'm saying 
That's what I would do. And I know, I personally haven't been, haven't been out here this long, know that for the most part, you would not do a thing. Why? Because you don't deserve peace. You want it, but you don't deserve it. You don't deserve prosperity. You want it, but you don't deserve it. You want joy in your life, but you don't deserve it. You want your dreams to come true, but you don't deserve it. And why don't you deserve it? Because you don't care about anybody but yourself. And whether you know it or not, I want to mention something to you who call yourselves a Christian. I didn't mean to talk about this religion thing, but it's all there. There was once a man the Bible talks about, for those of you who believe in the Bible, who could have been the second power on the face of the earth. All he had to do was to yield down and follow the evil one. That's all he had to do. Follow the evil one. He could have had big, I guess you can call it a state, could have been his castle. Basketball goals, football fields, all the kinds of cars. Well, you know where I'm going with that. But what happened? He didn't want it, any of it. Why? Because it was under the pretext of being something good. It was of Satan. It was evil. It was evil. And he wanted no part of it. So what's the message to us? Well, you said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man gets there except by me. So we say, follow. Somebody told you follow means to believe, and that's okay. But after belief comes action. And that action, my friend, is not going to take you straight down the road on the broad way. It's going to take you down the straight and narrow. That's where it's going to take you. And it might just take you to the cross. That's a blessing that only the one that's on that path knows. It's like a miracle. A miracle come to you, and you can tell everybody about it. Nobody's going to really believe it. Really, nobody's really going to believe it. But you know it's true. So the miracle is not for everybody else. The miracle is for you. So when you are on that path, people don't understand they told Dr. King, I, I think I heard a, a pastor once in Minnesota say, when he came through Minnesota, they told him that he better get off that path because he was going to get killed. And I'm thinking to myself, don't you think he knows that? He's on the path. He knows what he's doing. He's doing it. And what he's doing it for, because it's real. And it is a symbol for the rest of us as he was following Christ. For us to follow on that same path will take us straight to the cross. Unless the world changes. Now, if the world changes and becomes like God's way of life, beautiful. But if it doesn't, God's people have no reason to be here. And the biggest light that they can ever shine is to turn their back on the world and walk straight on up to that path and get killed. Get killed in the name of doing something that's good. Get killed in the name of doing what's right. Get killed in the name of loving folks. Hey, you can't lose that way. <laughs> Otherwise, you spend your whole life here. Oh, and one other thing I want to say this, ladies and gentlemen. If I were the president, I would make sure by your power, by your power, that when people, you know, because it, it's going to take a while before the medical profession can refocus their stuff and get it directed in trying to come up with cures instead of medicine just for, for treatment. We talked about cures. They're going to take a little bit of time. It probably won't take that much time. But in the meanwhile, in the meanwhile, when people get sick, especially when they're going to die, especially when they're going to die, and the pain, my friend, is so unbearable that when they go through it, you feel it too. And there's nothing you can do except allow them to go through the pain. It is my hope that you would have enough compassion in you that at a time like this, that any individual that says, hey, I got no problem, I've had a life, and I'm ready to say goodbye, and 
euthanasia is exercise. A nice, smooth, wonderful goodbye. No pain, cut that stuff out. No suffering, cut that stuff out. How you let people go up through that stuff talking about ooey? <laughs> That's one. Now, I'm talking to everybody, everybody, but specifically, we old people. You know they got to sit up. We die from everything, cancer mainly, and it hurts, man. I heard because I've seen it. My I, so many of my family members have gone just like that. I've been there, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm probably on that path myself. But I tell you what, whatever it is, I'm gonna try to do everything I possibly can to enlighten a fizzled mind that love is real. Love truly is real. And if I, somebody would kill me, <laughs> now I'm not asking you to kill me now. I'm just saying, if there's some hate in someone, some evil in someone, that they just can't stand the love that I speak of, the love that I walk, I'd rather go to sleep. <laughs> but however it comes, as long as it has to do with loving you, it's all right with me. Goodbye.